UPARTS, the an acronym for out-of-place artifacts, objects often found in extraordinary places, inexplicable in nature, and repeatedly dismissed by any who conform to mainstream institutional timelines for Homo sapiens. According to these, apparently already laid out chronologies specifically for man, the immense age of some of the out-of-place artifacts make their existences simply impossible to explain. The Nampa doll, for example, a favorite upart of a number of antiquarians and alternative historians alike. Found deep within the Earth's sediment, pumped to the surface, amongst the sediment which had been resting there for at least two million years, this small clay figurine, even adorned with surviving details of the fashion at the time of its creation. And although fascinating, this video does not focus upon zinc vases dynamited out of stone quarries, or iron pots found in 500 million year old coal seams or even the imprints of chariot wheels found deep in mines in Russia. It pertains to a modest artifact, a simple mortar and pestle once found by a J. H. Neal. And although today mortar and pestles are not the most interesting of utensils, it is their extreme ages which make them remarkable finds. Confirmed as being of immense age, this mortar and pestle was found left in situ discovered by a Mr. J. H. Neal in tertiary deposits dating back almost 33 to 55 million years. And just like that of the iron pot, found in the foundry, dated at 500 million years, felt compelled to create their own personal affidavits regarding the events and the legitimacy therein, no matter how hard it was to explain, these men felt compelled to do all they could to prove the legitimacy of said discoveries. On August 2, 1890, J. H. Neal signed an affidavit swearing his discovery to have been 100% legitimate. Mr. Neal declared that it is utterly impossible that these relics could have reached the position in which they once lay, unless it was at the time the gravel was deposited and present, yet before the lava cap formed, giving a dating of around 33 million years old. How old is our species? Where do our origins lay? Within this vast, ancient, and seemingly infinite universe? Have we, as Earthlings, experienced ancient cataclysm? An amnesic event as so many ancient texts write of? If yes, then to what level of sophistication did these now lost ancient ancestors once reach? Sophistications far too advanced for any mainstream publication to ever publish. It is a reality that the continual discovery of such artifacts are slowly proving was indeed a reality, no matter how difficult it is for any institute or individual historian to accept as a reality. It is an upart which we find highly compelling. The Necromantion Once used as a Greek temple of necromancy, Devoted by the Greeks to their god of the underworld Hades and his female consort Persephone. This site was believed by the Greek devotees to be the door of Hades, allowing entry to the realm of the dead. Located at the meeting point of the Acheron, Pyriphlegethon, and Cocytus rivers, which were believed to have also flowed through the kingdom of Hades. With names given to the rivers, presumably by the Greeks, interpreted to be joyless, burning coals, and lament. Whilst other temples, such as the Temple of Poseidon at Tanera, the temples at Hermione and Cumae in Italy, and Heraclea within Pontos, were known to have been used for the practice of necromancy. It was the necromantion that was the most famous of them all. According to ancient Greek beliefs, while the bodies of the dead decayed in the earth, their souls would be released traveling to this purported underworld via fissures within the earth. These spirits of the dead, according to the ancient Greeks, were said to possess abilities that the living did not have, including the power of precognition, the power to foretell the future. They therefore claim that these temples were erected by them in locations that were entrances to this mysterious underworld, used as altars for the believers of such to practice necromancy a belief form of communication with the dead. This practice was attempted in order to receive prophecy. 
However, if one explores the architecture of such site, not only does this ancient Greek claim of construction become a clear, dubiously attested claim, but the evidence for highly advanced precision block building, now known as polygonal masonry, is discovered throughout the site. This existence of such sophisticated block building, which is not only found within and upon nearly every as yet unexplained ancient site upon the Earth, but is incredibly similar in form to that of many other ancient sites within Italy, specifically the ancient wall which can still be found surrounding the Acropolis of Alatre and at other sites, including within the ancient ruins of Delphi. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering is as yet unexplained by modern academics, strongly indicating that this ancient site was originally built by a civilization now lost to history. Furthermore, like the enigmatic metal clamps, whose remnants are to be found within a number of these same ancient sites that were originally used by this highly intelligent group, these once utilized to keep the stones in their fitted positions as they shifted and settled over the millennia. These clamps' design vary from continent to continent. Our reason for mentioning this curiosity is that although the sophisticated methods of creating these ruins often remain similar or the same, depending upon the continent they are found, is dependent on the style and material these methods are made from. This, to us, strongly suggests that these ancient structures may have indeed been built by the different races, found within these differing countries. The commanding force, the leading power of these groups, was the same worldwide power and font of this knowledge, who, with their clearly incredible technological prowess, successfully created such structures, and indeed the Necromantion, which, regardless of their tremendous age, has successfully survived a vast amount of millennia, successfully making it into our own modern ancestors' lives, predictably adapted due to their wondrous nature, into their historical belief systems, often being adopted surrounding spirituality, either for a theistic worship, burial, or in the case of the Necromantion, for the use of contacting the dead through the mystic teachings of necromancy. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. We recently covered the astonishing discovery made deep within a coal mine under Rostov in Russia. Fortunately photographed by Mr. Kasatkin, an experienced safety engineer, who discovered the prints of what clearly appears to have been left by chariot's wheels. These seemingly impossible prints are, thankfully, not the only unexplained artifacts to have been found deep within the mines of Earth. In 1912, workers shoveling coal in the municipal electric plant in Thomas, Oklahoma, would make an equally important discovery. As they were breaking up the large lumps of coal in preparation for the furnaces, to their surprise, a small iron pot would be ejected from one of the chunks. Several experts would examine the iron pot over the following few days, all declaring it to be genuine. Apparently, the imprint of the pot could also still be clearly seen in the broken chunks of coal that had encased it for, in all possibility, millions of years. According to Robert O. Fay of the Oklahoma Geological Survey, the Wilburton Mines coal, in which the pot was found, is an incredible 312 million years old. The cup is now displayed at a private museum in southern Missouri. It was fortunately photographed by Robert Nordling, who sent a copy to Frank Lewis Marsh, Emeritus Professor of Biology at Andrews University in Berrien Springs, on 10 January 1949. He forwarded the images to Wilbert H. Rush in 1971. Rush was a professor of biology at Concordia College. This means that we now have several artifacts we know to be in existence, which, according to modern understanding as to the age of coal, are over 300 million years old. The pot? is still within a private collection of an unknown collector. In perusing the amazing archaeological sites within ancient Mexico, one will inevitably be confronted with a site called Cuicuilco. Just south of Mexico City's urban sprawl, a four-step round pyramid that, like all ancient structures, has secrets to tell, a secret like the Great Sphinx, 
which can reveal to us, all through overwhelmingly physical evidence, a true understanding of its true antiquity. The academic world, with its papers and books abundant, funded, researched, and mass-published, supported by an institute of individuals who seek to destroy all things which disagree with them. These people would have you believe that Quiquilco was constructed at the earliest in 300 BC. However, nature would tend to disagree. Quiquilco was hardly more than a small mound with some scraggly trees growing upon it back in 1922, before Brian Cummings received permission from the Mexican government to begin an excavation at the site. During initial excavations, Brian noted that the well-known Pedegro lava flow had partially engulfed this ancient structure. He became increasingly interested in the site after learning that geologist George E. Hyde dated the Pedegro lava flow at over 7,000 years ago. Additionally, when Brian's workers successfully cut deep trenches down into this ancient lava in an effort to locate the base of the pyramid, they not only passed through the bottom of this layer, but continued through several other eras of sediment before finally reaching the high-quality paving at the original level of the structure. In fact, over 18 feet of ancient sediment lay below this 7,000-year-old volcanic activity including two other previous lava flows, each separated by layers containing artifacts from no less than two other separate inhabitations of the area by civilizations of varying advancement. Also, evidence of a past submersion in no less than six feet of seawater, another ancient structure lending credence to the Great Flood. The pyramid itself once masterfully constructed using uncut chunks of lava, Amongst the first layer of erosion and decay resting just above the original foundations of the structure, it seems were remnants of a primitive civilization that moved into the area shortly after apparent catastrophe. Is this proof of our civilization once being destroyed? Along with this initial primitive civilization is an extremely ancient lava flow, which is followed by a dramatically far more advanced civilization. Amazingly, Cummings successfully produced dates of over 10,000 years for the original sediments, more than 2,000 years before ancient Egypt was said to have been built, though we feel this was most probably just a re-inhabitation of these powerful pyramidal structures. And although he also found dates far older than 10,000 years, he reluctantly put them down to anomalies and did not record them. After the details of this excruciating and highly efficient research was understood, Brian Cummings predictably experienced the cold shoulder of conspiracy. It seems mainstream archaeology, along with the well-known overpaid figures who partake in this limited public discussion, have successfully avoided the subject altogether. Indeed, it would require a dramatic rethinking of the largely accepted chronological development of man. It would also require an extremely tricky maneuver in verbal acrobatics to get away with explaining the presence of a highly complex, highly capable, highly advanced ancient civilization, building impossible structures well over 10,000 years ago. And although it seems that mainstream archaeology has successfully avoided having to make such a spectacle of their belief systems in their attempted denials of such evidence, it will continue to be something we would like to see.